He's very vocal in his own way. Um, and he's just an awesome guy to be around. He has a great spirit about him, really, really genuine heart. Uh, and he cares about people. He cares about the team. Uh, I mean, Von talks to everyone in the building. I mean, he's just an awesome dude. He's a, he'll be a guy that's a Hall of Fame as a teammate and obviously a Hall of Famer um, on the football field. And that's one of the things you just got to appreciate a guy like Von. I mean, he brings a lot to the table. And uh, we're lucky to have him. And I'm, uh, I'm just happy for his friendship and, uh, and for him to be able to, uh, to be here, you know, help us uh, try to help us achieve this goal. We'll go back to Manuel. Coach, last question from my side. What will be your ideal meal if things go well after the game? I'll be like, thank God we won it. You know, it's awesome. We're Super Bowl champions. Awesome. Our next question will come from Joel. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how did you make the uh, what, what led to you making the jump from from college ball to the NFL when you when you got that job with the Chargers? You know, it was just a, 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 a you know, an awesome opportunity. Um, I was actually at the University of Texas in San Antonio and um, Giff Smith and Gus Bradley called me when Coach Anthony Lynn got the job with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. And uh, Giff Smith is, uh, he was the defense, he's the defensive line coach with the Chargers right now, still there to this day. But Giff and I, Giff actually coached me when I was playing ball at Georgia Tech. He was my position coach, my defensive line coach. And we kept in, uh, in contact throughout the years, my time, whether I've been at Oklahoma State University coaching or whether it was at the University of Texas in San Antonio, UTSA coaching. Uh, he was always a mentor of mine. And, uh, and when you can stay in contact with those guys, whether it be for technique, uh, um, things that you can discover from a technique standpoint to continue to uh, grow as a coach, um, you know, he was always there for me. And uh, when the position presented itself and, um, and Coach Lynn got the job, Giff called me and uh, Gus called me shortly thereafter, asking if I wanted to, to come aboard. And I went on an interview and, uh, you know, it was, it was awesome. It was, you know, history from that point on. So I'm just super fortunate that a window of opportunity presented itself and I was in position to receive that. We'll take our next question from Daniel. What's up, Daniel? Hey, Eric, how's it going? Um, well, man. I'm curious, when you, as a position coach, coach a player as good as Aaron Donald is, how how challenging is that? And how do you how do you approach coaching a player that, you know, many believe is, you know, the best player in the league? You know, it's not challenging at all. It's actually fun, you know, but I'm just extremely fortunate because of the type of person that Aaron Donald is. You know, I, I, I was fortunate to be able to, uh, tell his parents how uh, blessed and excited that I was as a position coach, but more importantly, the way that he was raised. And I just wanted to, to congratulate them for raising such a special young man. When you talk about just well-mannered, uh, very respectable, uh, you know, always, you know, attention to detail. He's always on the screws with everything. He's the first one in the building. He's the last one to leave the building. I mean, he, he works extremely hard, as everyone know about. Um, I mean, he's just, the, you know, the ideal guy. And when you're able to have a guy like that who's arguably the best in the world, who I personally feel like is best to ever play the sport at the defensive line position, um, you know, I, I, I mean, you can coach that guy hard. And when you can coach him hard and, and, and there's, you know, he accepts that type of coaching, it makes it a, a bit easier to coach the rest of the guys. And I'm saying that from the standpoint that people look at him, you know, as Aaron Donald, the, the best player in the world. And he and coach tell him that 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 rep looked like a piece of trash and he'll get back and do it again. Well, the other guys, when you get on those guys for something, not looking at it as the way that it should be, you know, it makes those guys um, snap back to reality a bit quicker and understand that, hey, coach want me to get better and I need to do this right because if AD can take this type of coaching, then I, I surely can. not And I think that's what makes the, the group a bit tighter. That's what, uh, you know, where, where his presence and, and just the type of person that he is, uh, his value being in a room, you know, helps in that particular manner. And that's, that's why I appreciate him. And I just, I just credit it to his parents more than anything.
Okay, we have approximately 10 minutes left in this session. Just a reminder, if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand. Okay, Daniel, I'm going to allow you to talk. Got it. Got another one just on Aaron. When when you talk to, you know, interior defensive linemen around the league and they, they watch Aaron and he's just able to do things that they physically are unable to do. So they say, you know, sometimes it's hard to, you know, model their game after him because he's such a unique player right. as a coach because he's so unique in the things that he does, does that make it harder to coach him or do you have to coach him differently because of some of those unique things that he's able to do as a defensive lineman? No, it's like, uh, it's like being it's, as a coach for me, it's like, you know, being a kid in a candy store, you know, you can, it's, I, I tell people all the time, it's like playing flag football and you just grab your guys, you huddle them around and you draw plays in the dirt. Right. And AD is the guy that you can just create a route for and tell him to go out and execute it. It's the same thing in pass rush. You know, I can just create different pass rush packages and put him in certain positions and he'll go out and execute it. And that just makes it like the ultimate guy, if you will. I mean, he's the ultimate mismatch as a defensive lineman. And so it's like awesome to have a guy like that that can play every position across the board with extreme athleticism, power, explosiveness, yet having the technique to, to apply with those things makes him a special player. And then not to mention his brains, his above the neck approach, being able to have the mental stability to be able to understand what it is that you're trying to get done and go out and execute it at a high level. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And so, I mean, that's where he's the ultimate chess piece. Daniel, come back to you for another question. So just based on what you're saying, it seems like there's really like no limit to, you know, what you can think of with him. So does that allow you to be, you know, like the most creative version of yourself as a coach when you yes. game plan each week? That's exactly right. And that's why I'm super fortunate because, I mean, he brings a lot out of me as a position coach, you know, and, it, and, it's, and it's challenging for me in a good way because it's like, wow. Like, what else could we do with this guy? Like, what else could I think of? How else can we create a one-on-one -on -one situation for him? We can put AD right here. Maybe we can do this. You can mismatch him in a run game and in a pass game, and uh, he'll execute it the way that it needs to be executed. And then you have guys around him that can also, uh, you know, play those certain positions that you may need them to, to allow that to uh, come to fruition. And I think when you have the ultimate chess piece like an Aaron Donald, it just makes your defense a whole lot better. My apologies, Jordan. My uh, Zoom was messing up, but next question will come from Jordan Rodriguez. What's up, Jordan? Hey, Henny, how are you? And Skylar, no need to apologize. It's totally fine. We'll, we'll get there. I appreciate you guys. Um, one of your uh, past rushers at one point in the season kind of described to me like the way you guys designed the rush as kind of a painting almost and all the different brush strokes that, that go into it. I'm wondering how you see the rush. Like if you were going to look at it from a sky view down, all the pieces that move together and all the guys that have to, to wordlessly play off each other. And what about that kind of excites you with these versatile guys that you have? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely exciting, but you know, you build everything around Aaron Donald, you figure, mm -hmm. you know, that teams are going to uh, you know, there's going to be a tension you know, drawn to the guy. And so when you understand that and you can place him in particular, you know, situations on the field or different places on the field, then maybe there won't be as much attention. And if there is attention, then maybe we could do this and maybe we can do that without giving you the details behind the rush plan, Jordan. Uh, that's the mindset every week where you can find a way, you know, using the, the guys that you have putting them in certain positions on the football field and watching it come to fruition, understanding the attention that he des respectfully deserves. And uh, when you have guys like that, I mean, it, it, you should be able to utilize that. And that's just about, you know, putting your guys in position to have success because then it helps the guys around them. It helps the, the, the secondary. It helps the linebackers. It helps the other defensive linemen. You know, when you can utilize his skill set uh, you know, it just makes the team better. And we'll take our last question from Julian. Uh, 
Hey, Eric. Um, congrats on making the Super Bowl. I want to ask, how important is it for you guys to set the tone on the line of scrimmage? Obviously, you take care of the defensive line and you do the running game as well. So how do you guys plan on setting the tone on Sunday? Well, every week there's a mentality up front that we want to be able to set the tone. We want to be able to rearrange the line of scrimmage. And it starts with stopping the run. If you can stop the run every week and uh, try your best to make a team one dimensional and with the guys that we have that we feel like we can affect quarterbacks on a weekly basis, uh, you know, we think we can have some type of success. And uh, if we, it's just really up to us to be able to get that done because teams understand that as well. And, uh, and they're going to be creative in their approach to not allow those things to happen. And we just got to be able to sometimes weather the storm, calm down a little bit, and uh, just stay true to the game plan. And I think our guys have done a really good job of that throughout the course of the season of understanding how teams are going to try to attack us, but also understanding their counterpunch and uh, being ready to adjust accordingly because we've seen it happen, whether it be in practice, whether it be being able to predict the next move uh, and all of those things are allowed, have allowed us to have success. And I think our guys are, you know, they just take pride in being prepared. And, uh, and it's been awesome for us. We have really good, good players and, and have guys that understand what's going on and, and how we're, we're, you know, we're, we're being attacked, if you will, and, how, and, and what's our uh, uh, mindset uh, to start the game and uh, more importantly, finish the game. With no more hands up and uh, three minutes left in the session, I thank you all for coming out and listening to Coach Henderson speak today. And thank you, Coach Henderson, for your time today. Greatly thank appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It. Thank you very much.